the shocking returns in the hot stocks life portfolio, they should call it lukewarm stocks. Surely that's a better name for the show. But never mind, let's, it's costing the manager sleepless nights and his hair as well. Welcome to the most scheming, conniving, calculating, a downright vicious stock picking show on television. You're watching CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. I'm Bruce Whitfield, self styled judge, jury, and executioner, right here on Share Shooter. Now, is it true that Grant Patterson secretly called Whitey Besson for a sidebar? Would the Sassel chief executive bother getting up for less than a million rand a week? And what do you do if you cross Burberry with Apple? And we don't know all the answers to these questions, but what we do know is that we've got a defending champion with five appearances, four wins and one single loss. Rowan, I should have been a builder. Williams up against Chris I don't do Winter Gilmore from Absa Investments. Plus, if we can accommodate them, the Hot Sox team to put their stocks on the block and come and defend themselves about the performance of the life portfolio. House rules, both of our guests have prefect three shares. Neither knows what the other holds, but each must accept at least one of the competitor's stocks. The longer they leave it, you know it by now, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got 30 seconds to argue their stock pick. So now that you know the house rules, I'm going to ask you, why would we, I refer to you as a builder? Did you once go and study something stupid like building science? That's where I started out, yeah. Why? Still building stock portfolios. Building stock portfolios, that's, that's what it, it was. That's why it's so <laughs> immensely successful. And you're one of those people they call a swallow uh, for no other reason than you just don't do winter, either in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. You're a bit of a, a flitterer and a flutterer. No, man, I love winter. You love winter. I love getting on the skis and coming down the slopes. Yes, but yeah, you it's can't fun. do that in Joburg, and that's why you spend. No, your, that's your, also true. That's yeah. why you spend your your summers in the northern hemisphere. Yeah. Chris Gilmore, would you want to go first or second? You're an old hand at this. I point, don't mind. You? I'm very, very. Um, let's say fair about this whole thing. Oh, let's say fair, is he? Okay, he doesn't think that you're much of a rival, Rowan Williams. Uh, right. Before we get to your first pick, would you ever be seen dead on a pink set? No. Because, you know, those hot stocks people, that's why they're here today. They want to come in and experience what it's like to be on a real show, to understand and putting your stocks on the block. So we'll talk to them in just a minute. Tell me why, in 30 seconds, you think that paper and packaging, what's well, more paper than packaging, mm. really, why paper is a good long-term bet. You're not going for NAMPAC, because mm. NAMPAC's just got a new chief executive out of Sassel uh, recently. Anton mm. Dorator uh, has left Sassel to go to NAMPAC. But you are going long on Mondi in 30 seconds. Mondi, so uh, interesting, it's moving from paper to packaging. That's part of the excitement. Uh, a global listed, dual listed uh, paper and packaging group uh, spun out of Anglos in 2007, recently joined the FTSE 100 index, been a stellar performer, up 87% here to date. Great set of uh, first half results, uh, HEPs up 48%. Despite the strong performance, the share still looks reasonable, 14p forward and 2.1% dividend yield. Good play on global consumer growth. In the FTSE 100? Yes. That must be what? How many South African companies are there in the FTSE 100? I've got SAB Miller in there, Old Mutual must be in there. Um, and we've got Monty in there, three companies. Investec, probably not. Um, but these are the dual listed yeah. companies? Um, are, are there's, the FTSE 100? There's, uh, yeah, BTR, back. A, a British American, yeah. but that's more theirs than ours. Yes, I guess so. Kind yeah. of, it was ours, then yeah. we gave it to them, and <laughs> it's not ours anymore. But companies with South African roots uh, make up 5% of the FTSE 100. Amazing. That's kind of a cool statistic. Yeah. Bank, I'll bank that one. Do you like Mondi, Chris Gilmore? I actually do like Mondi, and uh, you know what, what, uh, what Rowan says. So is you're folding? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, well, I think, you know. That's a Mondi. Also, the, 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 the strategy, I think, is right. Where mm. some paper companies just plod along, keeping uh, on with, with, with trying to put out uh, stuff for newsprint and the like. These guys, I think, have been a lot more innovative and adapted to the changing conditions in that paper market. No, I lie, lie, like it. And so this is a successful unbundling. Yeah. Because here's Anglo American mm. say, look, we dig holes in the ground. Sometimes we do it well. Well, sometimes we overpay for assets in Latin America, but what the one thing we know we're not is a 1980s style South African conglomerate with lots of assets that have got nothing to do with our core business. They unbundle Mondi. Uh, Mondi takes the uh, grasps the nettle and has done a really good job. Yeah. No. Okay, it's good one. So you're accepting this one? I'd accept that. I don't think it's worth any more discussion. If he's yeah. had a fight with you, then we'll let him fight with you later. So, well, no, I mean, that is the fastest capitulation, I think, <laughs> in the history of <laughs> Share Shootout. Yeah, I like it. Give up. Uh, I, I roll over. He's like a puppy today, is Chris Gilmore from Absa ah. Investments. Um, who's hot or not? Bronwyn or Paul? <laughs> Depends from which perspective you're, you're looking at them. You see, you're going into diplomacy after this. That's what yeah, you're doing. Yeah. Tell me why you would rather go and spend a night in a city lodge hotel room 
than the Ritz, Mr. Scotsman, in 30 seconds. To me, it's a no-brainer. This company's been on the market, what, since uh, the early 1990s. Uh, it's had a tremendous track record. I think only once it's had a bit of a hiccup, back in the, the early part of last decade, and again a couple of years ago. Recently, they put in too much uh, in, in the way of capacity because they thought the, the World Cup would attract more people than it actually did. But uh, they've grown into that capacity. It's going like a steam train. We're seeing, because of the week round, a lot more tourists coming to South Africa. And while their main uh, thrust is into the, the corporate sector, they're doing well. I think now I'm not moving. Don't you wish they could sort out that problem of empty rooms on Friday, Saturday, Sunday? They have a thing called bid to stay, which effectively auctions it off. You they ask people to come in with a with bids, and some of them can be quite cheeky, and you, you can be very lucky and actually get something. So that is the problem for all hoteliers around the world. Mm. You know that valley period between Thursday and Sunday. But, but you're not going to take Mrs. Gilmore off for a romantic, ni um, a romantic <coughs> weekend to the City Lodge. You're going to pay a little bit more <laughs> and perhaps go to the Formula One, or what's it called, Sun One, <laughs> um, Sun nowadays. One. And that's the trouble with this model. It's, it's designed for bare-knuckle tourists, but people are prepared to go for the absolute basics. You're going for the destination, not the hotel experience. I think that's right, and, and it's very much, uh, you know, as you say, a no-frills type of thing. 80% um, of the, the profit comes with 20% of the hassle, and that's what I like about this thing. Mm. Do you like it? It's quite a tricky one, not to like, I guess. Uh, it's uh, clearly the industry's come out of a cyclical downturn, and uh, it's moving up quite nicely. Uh, you're seeing improved demand. There has been overcapacity. I think uh, there's been a hiatus in sort of new capacity for the past two years, following the sort of euphoria of the, the World Cup. Uh, and so the industry is seeing improved uh, occupancies. Uh, you're seeing, I guess, good focus on that sort of business consumer type market. Uh, you know, I would be concerned about exposure to the pure consumer, as you're saying. They're probably down trading or not taking holidays in a, ver a very difficult consumer environment. The share has responded very nicely already and has a, had a very strong run. I guess you'd have to say, is the South African uh, tourism uh, sector really going to be able to attract those uh, tourists that maybe will take over if there's soft domestic yeah. demand. The, the RAND, I guess, is pointing in the right direction, uh, but that would be maybe where my concern okay. lies. Rowan, I mean, I've now been talking about hot stocks and that dreadful program where people talk directly to camera, but we're nice on this show. We're personal. We okay. talk to each other. We're warm and fuzzy. We're not like them. Uh, we're not on a pink set. We're here. Program. We're together. We're talking <laughs> to each other. Who are those people? Right. So. You like the company, you like the fact that it offers a utilitarian uh, solution, and as more and more companies cut back, you look at companies, for example, you just look at what's happening in the management layers of so many companies. Pioneer Foods cutting back, Pick and Pay cutting back, Sassel's gonna be cutting back on management levels. They're cutting costs wherever they can. This business business traveler market is the part that you really like, Ms. Yeah. Gilmore. Yeah. And it's a case of, you can fill those rooms and get the occupancies up to 60, 70%, but to get them to 80% where they were at the peak before they then flooded the market with rooms, that is the trick. And I'm not sure they know what to do with that, Chris. Oh, no, look, uh, bear in mind that any uh, hotel company that is an 80% average occupancy mm -hmm. is effectively, it comes back to the point about the valley period, yeah. it's effectively in that Monday to Friday period yep. working at close to 100%. It's doing well. So yeah. while you want to do it, logistically it, it, it provides you with some, some major uh, headaches. Do you take it or do you shoot it down? I'm going to take it. Mistake. Okay, <laughs> you say he's accepting it. City Lodge, he's gone long on City Lodge, 5.4 billion rand company, hotel group, and it, it really is filled a really good niche in South Africa. Lots of competition, increased competition in that particular sector, but they've got a format that works, the Monday to Friday format, but they need to f get uh, bodies in beds on the weekend. So City Lodge with a PE ratio of 21 times, quite pricey, mm. but you're willing to take a risk on it. Okay, Roan Williams from Nitrogen Fund Managers. Here's an interesting one, because it's quite controversial. It's not one that's done particularly much for investors since it was listed on the JC four, five years ago or thereabouts. Chris Gilmore's going, what on earth is he talking about? Your net investments in 30 seconds. Listed investment holding company uh, coming out of the, the Rupert stable. Uh, You're still doing hot stocks. Over here. We're over here. Principal <laughs> asset is uh, VAT. Uh, so uh, still like that. It's got a reasonable valuation. Good exposure to global growth. I think uh, the cigarette consumer is going to continue smoking. Mm. Uh, been diversifying, selling down the bat, uh, moving into diversified financial assets, pensions corporation, some US real estate and some private equity exposure. And you really back 
backing the Rupert investment prowess. Okay, now next time you go to Hot Stocks, talk to them. It'll freak them out. <laughs> they don't like that kind of thing. They're not human. Okay, uh, do we like Renette? I... No, we don't like Renette. Excellent, why not? Number of things. Uh, you made, made the point that it was spun out of um, Richmond and Rembrandt about five years ago, thereabouts, and it's done very little in terms of actually getting new investments in there. This is supposed to be a company, and look, I, and I, I take uh, Rowan's point to heart that you are backing the, 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 the Ruperts, they are tremendous businessmen. And at some point in time, I do believe that this one will come right. But you know, I mean, what, 84% of, 85% of the NAV is still, still BAT? Down to 75 now. Well, it's, it's, there's still, you know, it needs to get an awful lot more in there, I think, to, to, to really convince me. That's the first point. And secondly, you're actually paying an awful lot of fees mm. to these guys. Yes. Uh, I, I find it an expensive uh, exercise. So it, 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 those fair points. I mean, you can't argue well, against that. Well, it's at a that. 28% discount to NAV. So I at the wrong price, yes, it doesn't make sense. But that's fully now discounted, that, that fee rate. So it's probably be about a 5% discount after fees. Is that enough, though, to buy into an investment holding company? I think with uh, the look at the Remgro uh, track record uh, and also the Richmond track record, these guys are really good at spotting cycles, really good at investing. So they're sitting on the sidelines waiting for an opportunity? They've started. Mm. Uh, they are selling down. I mean, BAT has been a great uh, investment, say, for the last four of those five years. It's still a pretty good investment. But how long do we wait for some of that, r that Remgro Richmond magic? to start showing itself in Renette before we lose patience. I think the last patience. two years, next two years we're going to see. Uh, so you've got to get in now for a two year view that they're going to yeah. be, uh, a fresh wind is going to blow through Stellenbosch and uh, they're going to start making some deals and acquisitions. You're not convinced, Chris? Not, not convinced. Not convinced. Yep. He doesn't believe that fresh wind ever blows through Stellenbosch. <laughs> so you're shooting it down. I'm shooting it down. He's shooting it down. You're shot down on Renette. Okay, let's move on, Chris Gilmore, then, uh, from Apsa Investments to your next pick. And this is an interesting one because this has been probably one of the great success listings of about the 2008 listings boom, that sort of era. Maybe it was a little bit before that. So many of these companies that came to market were massively disappointed. Lots of family businesses came to market. Um, the families got their money out and investors lost out. This one, however, has been particularly rewarding for people who participated in the IPO, who bought the shares early, who relished the fact that there were power cuts, who relished the fact that Eskom couldn't come to the party. You know what I'm talking about, Rowan. It's... Ellie's? Ellie's, absolutely right, in 30 seconds. Exactly. Okay, um, they had a little bit of a, uh, a setback uh, in 2009 when they had an oversupply of, of generators in, in terms of the Eskom whole story. Uh, but they, they, they've learned their lessons and they've come back and they've got a couple of strings to their bow. Uh, one is the fact that I think, uh, you know, with Eskom is going to be a, a major problem with for all of us, I think, for quite some, some time to come. They are filling a gap there both from the consumer and from the industrial side. And secondly, they're taking on uh, DSTV, uh, with open view in terms of supplying the decoders and, and, and doing this type of thing. And they're getting in all of it. But I think that'll be quite good as well. Okay. Taking on DSTV, good luck on that particular front. Others have tried and failed dismally. And it's about having the sports channels. It's about having that mm. capacity to hold South Africans' attention. Free to air. Uh, satellite TV. I hope it works. I really would like to see a rival come through for DSTV. It can only be healthy. But does the Ellie story grab you enough, Rowan? It's a hard one to mm. argue against, and I wish you luck with it, considering you've already accepted City Lodge. It's been somewhat of a darling, uh, and I think a lot of what uh, the sort of virtues have been priced in. Uh, I looked at the last set of results. What was disappointing to me was the ability to transfer the operating performance into cash flow. A lot of it's going into stock and the, the, the cash flows were actually particularly mm. poor. And uh, that's got to concern you in terms of uh, that stock and how quickly it needs to be replaced and how quickly it can get obsolete. That would be my first concern. And I think in terms of this uh, open view uh, and uh, clearly multi-choice is a formidable competitor, you're seeing it very bogged down at the moment in terms of uh, the, the battle between ETV and multi-choice and SABC. Quick response from you, Chris Gilmore, on those concerns? In terms of moving the stock, uh, they were able to move a lot of those um, analog uh, decoders, sorry, the, the, sorry the, the digital decoders into, into Nigeria, literally at the, the, the flick of a button uh, earlier this year. So I think they're, they're quite nimble in terms of being able to move stock. Mm. Uh, it's, it's been a nice business. It's trading on a multiple of nine yeah. times. Yeah. It's, cheap. it's cheap. Come on. The, the returns on capital aren't great. Okay. Uh, and, <laughs> and the desperate. cash flows Cutting aren't short. great. And uh, <laughs> the, the near term sort of 
you know, outlook for, for some of the areas. If you look, Top TV has basically been a failure. So it's quite a hard Have market. Have you watched to Top TV recently? No. Your mother <laughs> wouldn't approve. You should. <laughs> so Ellie's, um, Ellie's is, a, is a great business. It's cheap. It's got one or two bottlenecks, perhaps, in the business right now. But it's in a South African sweet spot. It doesn't have any huge rivals, does it, Chris Gilmore? In that particular space, yeah. nah. Okay, yeah. but you're shooting it down anyway. Shoot it down. You're shooting it down. He's playing the game this evening. Okay, so what we've got uh, this evening, and we're going to go at City Lodge and Eddie's. Those are Chris Gilmore's two picks. City Lodge uh, getting the big thumbs up from Rowan Williams this evening. Ellie's a petulant put down. How's that? That was quite good, actually. Alliteration on the show. <laughs> Rowan Williams from Nitrogen Fund Managers going long on Mondi, long on Renette. Mondi getting the Gilmore thumbs up. Renette, Chris Gilmore doesn't believe that there is going to be anything really worth looking at in Renette in the next two years. Let me shot it down. What is hot? What is not? What is lukewarm? Paul Teron doesn't like the answer to that question. We'll give him a chance to respond in just a moment. I'm looking at my crystal ball, and these two are separated by a hair's breadth. One of them is going to pull a rabbit out of a hat. One of them is going to have to bring something really special to the show. Join us on the other side of the break to see who pops who. Don't go anywhere. Would both give us their two stock picks. We've got from Rowan Williams, the Nitrogen Fund Managers, Mondi and Renette. Mondi getting the big thumbs up. We saw Chris Gilmore fold early on them as a packaging joke. And except Mondi, Renette, he laughed it out of town. Then Chris Gilmore from Absa Investments, Long on City Lodge. Rowan Williams a little bit concerned about the fact that perhaps this isn't a market that is going to grow hugely in South Africa. But being cautious, being a cautious sort, he accepted City Lodge and was very grateful. But he tried quite a feeble attempt at putting down Ellie's. He put it down. Do we believe him? I'm not sure, sure that he'd do. Um, let's go, Chris Gilmore, then into the final stretch. And look at you just you're just a nationalist at heart. That's why you like this oh, particular right. company. You see, you see there's a yeah. connection. Yeah. Yeah. You only like it because it's run by a Scotsman. The company yep. is Rowan Williams. Let's see how good you are at this game. We're playing international genealogy here on Share Shootout. Which South African companies are run by? Of course, there we go. That's one of them. The other one is Woolies. Woolies, absolutely. You're very good at this game. Chris Gilmore, in 30 seconds, tell me why you're prepared to pay up for Woolies. Good point. It is expensive, no doubt about it. But I think uh, you have to you have to pay up to get something as good quality as this. This really is, has become the darling of the retail sector after many many years. Back in the 80s, it was it, it languished for a long time. The big critical factor here was getting the clothing side right, and they've done that with a vengeance. Uh, and now today, you've got food, which is always fantastic. You've got clothing, and I think you've got financial services, which has got an incredibly clean book. Once we get into a nice upturn in the, the economy again, that's going to really kick in as well. So I think they'll be firing on. Many cylinders. Emerging black middle class loves this stock mm, as well. Okay, it's a, it's a lovely company. Great place to go and shop. Is it a great place to invest your money, however? Would you be able to afford a Woolies basket if the share price goes down? Mm. Rowan Williams, your thoughts on Woolies? So the valuation is, is full, and I guess uh, the concern is the South African consumer. As, as I guess bullish as people remain in terms of South African consumer stocks, they've taken a dip and they've recovered. I think the consumer hasn't really recovered and is still feeling the pressure. But the consumer at the top end is buying motor cars, is trading in property once again, isn't cutting back on what they want on their dinner table. They continuing to spend money. They are less leveraged than they were in 2008. People with money, the traditional Woolies customer, is probably in better financial shape now than they were five years ago because they've suddenly got a bit of a fright and are more responsible. Doesn't that make Woolies attractive? Look, it, it, it's more defensive than uh, lower end, uh, and you're seeing it in the numbers, but I think with the introduction of e-tolls, everyone's going to feel that. I think the increasing cost of healthcare, in increasing cost of education, just that marginal spend is going to be under pressure. And uh, it's, it's not getting any better. Rates are going up. That petrol. Good, no, good point. I mean, every household's costs are going up. Is there, do, do South Africa, does, does the woolly shopper have sufficient sort of, uh, of a buffer zone, a financial buffer zone, to keep them shopping at Woolies with all of these uh, these administered costs going up? I think they do. And if you look at the kind of advertising these guys are indulging at this point in time. Indulging, and I yes, like that, yes. You, you, you'll <laughs> see the kind of good value that you actually get. For 150 bucks, you're getting a, 
uh, a main course, you're getting salad, you're getting a you're bottle of wine, and some, you're getting... Yeah. Somebody sent me a comparative the other day of that campaign two years ago. But you got half a cow, a vineyard, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the dessert spread from, uh, yeah, from yeah. the Mount Nelson. Yes, now, the portion size has, has, has decreased a, a bit. And now your 150 buck value meal is um, half a goat leg and, and a cabbage leaf. Um, they keep the marketing up, but they've crafted it very carefully. And people who are watching this closely are saying, hold on a second, is it still the same value? They pretend it is, but is it really? At the kind of level we're talking about, I, cer I certainly think it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're one of the few retailers out there that actually gives you proper, decent, long-lasting promotions, three for two, this type of thing. So th they're getting the footfall across there on the food side. I think it's working. I you can see a deal. Well. He's a Scotsman. So is the chief executive, of course, mm. of Woolworths, Ian Moyer. He comes from a different part of Scotland to me, right? Then, so. <laughs> the part where they know how to make money. Yeah. Well, they're okay, different yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you're shooting it down. It, it's a valuation issue, I think, also for... It's trading at 22 times earnings, oh, which in the retail sector, isn't that demanding? It's high. Mm. Higher than the average for the market, but in the retail sector, it's not that demanding. No, it's 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 one of the fully priced. It, it also it's two thirds closed. You've got to remember that. Mm. So it's getting sort of food type valuation for two thirds clothing type retailer. That is a concern. Okay, so you're shooting it down. Down. He's shooting it down. Terribly sorry. He doesn't like. It doesn't matter which part of Scotland he comes from. Uh, which part of Scotland does he come from, incidentally? I'm not sure. <laughs> but it's, it's the other it's part. Not, you know it's the other part because you can tell it in his accent. <laughs> because you can tell the difference between a Scots accent from the east, the west, the north, and yes, certainly the south. Okay, right, Rowan Williams. This is a first mm. for this particular show. Okay. I'm interested in this particular company. It's tiny. It's got a market cap of 437 million rand. Chris Gilmore is sweating in his socks. He doesn't even know what Adapt IT does. Will you put him out of his misery in 30 seconds? It's uh, a listed software and services group. Uh, it's got a high percentage uh, management ownership. Uh, they've done a great job at uh, acquisitions to consolidate the sector somewhat. They have exposure now to three sectors, manufacturing, education, and financial services. Uh, particularly excited about exposure to education, massive investment by the government in FET colleges, and uh, very good, exciting growth prospects, and potentially one of the next big IT groups uh, on the JC. Or it could be like by EOH at some point. Okay, so it, it's one of those. It's a tiny, it's a minnow in this particular sector. Chris Gilmore, good luck. I'd need to know the, uh, the, the PE on this one. It is trading around, and I've now just destroyed my entire screen. Um, there we go, we'll zoom into it a little bit. It's on a multiple of under 18. Historical multiple of under 18. Yeah, forward of around 15 dividend yields, quite low, one and a half. One and a half percent, yeah. Yeah, look, I think one has to be a hell of a careful on, uh, on IT stocks because, um, you know, a lot of people got very burned over, over the mm -hmm. years in, in, in IT stocks. I, I hear what you say, Rowan, and uh, look, I think uh, they may be in, in, in the right kind of sector. But, you know, it's been around for a few years, and if it's only at, uh, at 400 million rand market gap, that says to me they perhaps haven't um, tried hard enough. Uh, in, in that particular Ooh, space. Ooh, fighting talk. Have they tried hard enough? Uh, definitely. It's the, the transformation in the business, I think, has been in the last three years. I mean, uh, you can also make incredible returns out of IT if you look at something like EOH. Oh, I sure. mean, that was, yes. uh, I think mm -hmm. it's getting to a 100 type bagger uh, type. Uh, so that's, that's the potential. And I think people are starting to see that. And it's really through that acquisitive growth. If management show the ability to make those acquisitions successfully bed them down and continue to grow those businesses, which they've been able to do all three. Okay, there we go. Interesting one, but you're shooting it down anyway. Not convinced. Shooting Not convinced. It shooting it down. All oh, strategic, <laughs> tactical. So, who's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat? Who's got a special trick up their sleeve that will win? Rowan Williams has given up. He's walking off set already. He, he's capitulated. Right. He's vanished. Maybe something to sweeten your decision. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> all right. Gilmore? <laughs> Bribery and corruption. <laughs> Bribery and corruption. This oh, is Sally really Williams Nuga. It's advertising mum's oh, Nuga. It's very nice. It is very Lovely. nice. You know what? I, I, I look at the shares. I mean, I'm going to be objective about this, right? Okay. I love it's the almond one. Um, Rowan Williams <laughs> from Nitrogen Fund Managers. Long and Mondi, Renette and Adapt IT. Adapt IT, a courageous choice. Mm. I commend you on that. Renette, neither of us buys your, your argument on that one. We like the Mondi story. And we also yeah. like the trivia that you provided, that there are five companies with South African roots in the FTSE 100. Um, it's reverse colonialism. We like that. Chris Gilmore, City Lodge. Interesting choice. Accepted by Rowan Williams. Uh, Ellie's. You don't like the, uh, you, you don't, you don't like the, the, the uh, he doesn't like the story on Eddie's and the Woolworth story, he doesn't buy the story. I've now got to make a choice. Who mm. wins and who goes? 
This has been possibly the easiest decision <laughs> I've ever had to make. I will not be bribed. Go away! Not even Sally Williams Nougat is good enough to bribe me. You've got a bottle of whiskey in the boot of your car, right? No. Okay, no. excellent. You can stay as well. We'll eat that <laughs> after the show. That's it from the stock picking battle here on CBC Africa. No bribe is good enough unless it's liquid. The most vicious stock picking show on TV. Join me and tweet me at Bruce Business. You can also tweet the producers. You can find them. We've had to bump Paul and Bronwyn again. I'm sorry. Guys, next time we will really try and get you. You know, we need, you need us to drive you, to drive your viewership. We know that you need us a hell of a lot more than we need you. If you've got any tips, incidentally, to help Paul to run with his stock picking abilities, uh, Paul underscore Vest Act, that is the way to contact him via Twitter. Join us again next week as we continue to pick our winners, shoot out the rest, and hopefully, if we've got time, yeah, maybe next week. All right, guys, sorry, that's it, we've got to go. Okay, new good time. Awesome, cheers, everybody, good night.